Okay. So, uh, hello, Edward. Good afternoon for you. Good evening for me. Um, so, you have this great idea, uh, this great initiative that you started with English Without Borders. So, give me a little bit of background of who you are, what do you do, why you do it. Tell me your story. Um, I'd love to. Uh, my name is Edward, and I'm by trade, I started in the fitness industry years ago. I love educating and empowering people. And what happened was over years, I have this internal drive. I love to meet new people and travel the world. And so nobody in my family had ever traveled. So a lot of it was kind of like when people were learning English in our course, it's the travel thing that nobody's ever done before. And we're kind of the forerunners into something new. Um, so I started traveling and then I started a nonprofit working with um, NGOs around the world. And I went to different countries serving orphanages, toys every Christmas. And it helped me learn a little bit more about that culture and also finding a way to meet needs for the people. So I traveled um, my first year, I went down to Haiti and then I went over to uh, Honduras and Nicaragua. I went to Mexico after the earthquakes. Um, I went over to India and Indonesia, Nepal. And a lot of this was always working with charity work and helping with the orphanages and finding a better way to not just educate, but also to inspire people because I saw the struggles they went through. Um, and honestly, I knew that there was something I could do to help that. But at the time, I wasn't sure, which then led me to where we're at now with English Without Borders. Um, I was traveling through Asia, and I had spent seven months in India at this time. And the number one thing I, that people would ask me is, um, can you help me speak perfect English? And I had never thought about that. I'm just a native speaker here from the United States. And I was like, sure, I'd love to help you in any way you could. Well, helping people, I became like family to so many great people around India, thousands of people that um, I traveled by a motorcycle in India, a Royal Enfield. And I just found that I would go to slums and I would go to universities. I would work with the MLA. And it was the question, no matter if I was at the highest level, the richest people um, or the people who needed help on, on the, the poverty level, was they were all asking the same question, can you help me speak perfect English? I want to be like the Hollywood actor. And they would always tell me about their favorite Hollywood actor. And uh, that was a big purpose for them. And that's been sitting on my heart now for the last few years. And coming home, I was like, we have to fix this because it doesn't exist yet. Great. That's awesome. I think a lot of other uh, travelers, especially Americans, um, millennials now, we're, we're starting to travel a lot more Frequently, it's something that we're starting to value a lot more, um, understanding how the other parts of the world live. And I think lots of people would be able to relate now to your story. Every time we travel, we, we tend to have that same sort of experience. So um, you gave sort of a, a hint, a kind of clue there to us of what is the purpose of English Without Borders. So if you had to define in two to three sentences what the main purpose is, what your main goal of creating English Without Borders is, how would you describe that? That's a great question. So English without borders within two to three sentences, and this is super easy, is to give the world, every country, equal opportunity to be educated by a quality teacher that can teach a skill or trade to help them have a better life, whether it's in a job, travel, family, or a lot of times I've helped people just meet a traveler because they're scared to talk to a woman to ask them to have a date. Um, so it was to build confidence. Yeah, I love that. Very concise, very clear. Um, and the idea of having equal rights is something that in the world on a global level, um, especially in today's current society, the year 2020 is pretty uh, crazy with all of the social changes we have going on. And we talk consistently about equal rights, but linguistic rights, I think, is something that lots of people don't think about. You know, who has the right to what language and how do you talk about that? And that's something that as native speaking, uh, as native, native English speakers from America, we don't necessarily have to think about that very often. So um, I think that's very unique, a purpose that not many people um, have created, one that I personally have not heard of in any other place. So what is it that makes your English Without Borders program stand out compared to other English programs out there? Okay. Yeah. I'm gonna, the super cool thing about it, this is what gets me excited, was the vision was to make it where it's completely free and they go free. There's nothing in the world that is free anymore. And I go, no, we're in 2020. We have technology. 
Kayla, does it cost us anything to have this conversation right now? No, 100% free. Completely for free. And so why, when the world has given us ways, everybody in the world now has changed. Even the youngsters, everybody in the world, they have a smartphone. They have some type of technology in hand or computer access. The internet is better and it's always for free. So what we do is we find teachers that are willing to, that are highly educated, we're talking about bachelors and doctorates here, um, that can step in and assist us giving you that free education. And when I realized when I asked that question, because I always thought, if, how could you do something for free? I had more people than I could ever imagine raise their hand and say, I'm, I'm more than happy to help you make this come to life because they saw the same vision that I saw. So free. That's beautiful. That's free, beautiful. amazing vision. Free value uh, for something that's so important for millions and millions of people in the world. Um, I think that's a very noble cause and something that not many people uh, out there are trying to provide. So what can people expect as a result from English Without Borders? Is this something that focuses on, on grammar, on beginners, advanced level speaking? What is included in English Without Borders? Okay, that's great. What I see English Without Borders is we're moving, our first steps is we're starting with um, accent reduction. Now, I think accent is a very beautiful thing and it shows you where you're from in the world. Now, some accents are a little stronger and some are a little bit lighter. We all have something that was normally to our native tongue worked linear, but when we start switching to different languages like Spanish and English and French, things have to change so the words can be better understood. So I had, when I was meeting people, it was the clarity of what they were speaking. So you can speak all you want, but if you're not understood on the opposite side, there is no longer, there's this no longer uh, this coherence of language, it's now broken. So something as simple as saying, um, where's the bathroom, can be very difficult for some languages because of certain lettering. So our goal was to soften that up to help them get whatever the opportunity looked like, whether it was travel or it was a job or maybe it was just cross communication. Um, so we're going to start there. That program then leads us into multiple programs where we can help people with getting jobs and help empower them with language since we can communicate better about better practices in their business or in the uh, hiring process or even beginners. So we're going to be expanding in those areas. So no matter where you're at, I'd say a one, a beginner, or 10 being advanced, we'll have a program that will meet your needs. The only qualification requirement is you show up to classes. And that way I can, I can work with our teachers working with you. Yeah, that's great. So this is something that can work from levels A to Z uh, for your personal life, your business life, your educational life. It's something that can uh, work for everyone, which I think is great. Uh, normally we see programs only geared towards specific audiences and people think oh this is free but it's only for these people so this is something that can um, be geared towards anyone which i think is is a great cause it um, is well i'll, I'll kind of elaborate one other step on it it really at first when i started thinking about creating this english school online that doesn't exist yet but we are the first ones creating this it, it seemed overwhelming and then i realized it was not it's a community effort so you know, used to, um, and many countries know this, when you're in grade school, my grandparents, the, young, the older kids taught the younger kids, and it was always cross-communication, but by everybody assisting, you learn quicker because there was this collaborative help between all the different people. So we're using that same method by building a community of like-minded people learning English that can actually work with teachers and have people to rely on to help each other, and that way they can speak more frequent so they have more time to practice. That's great. I think that's a very important aspect that, um, especially in me working here in Spain and seeing other schools go through English language education, uh, you can tell that it's it's just a, a normal, traditional, I guess we could say, um, English learning process. And your teacher isn't necessarily there to support you. And obviously, neither are your um your colleagues who aren't fun or aren't excited, they don't think English is fun either. So if you're that one dork, that one nerd in class that you love English and no one else does, um, who's gonna practice with you? And if you live in a place where not many people do speak English or if they do speak, they speak with such a strong accent that they can't actually speak with native speakers because their, their accent is too strong. I've seen that here in Spain where it's hard for me to understand someone uh, with their uh, strong Spanish accents, um, it can be a total game changer for someone to have that support and have someone just say, you can do it and this is fun and why not? I'm here to support you. So if no one else does, I'll lift you up. You know, I have your back. So I think that community aspect 
um, that teamwork sort of mentality that you can have through language learning is a really cool aspect to have to it. it so it's nice to know the community you walk into, like you said, they have your back or mm -hmm. there's no judgment here. If you want to practice, no matter what level you are, somebody's willing to take that extra step. I call it the helping hand and say, hey, even if you don't know what to say, just give me your first step. Take the first step speaking something and then let's start from there. Because nobody here is to critique you or to embarrass you. It's us working together to help you. And uh, so I really encourage my, my students, my audience, my teachers to always be taking that extra step and when you don't know something, you have permission to ask. That's why this is so successful with English Without Borders is people will answer the question you ask. You have somebody that you never had before in your life from a different country that says, hey, ask a question and we're here to help you. And that's a very empowering feeling when you're from a country that hasn't given you that opportunity yet. This program stops that. We will fix that. Yeah. That's amazing. And I can definitely see me as a, um, as a bilingual person, I can see how learning another language, you, one of the biggest challenges you go through or often face is the fear of making a mistake or that embarrassment that you feel when you mess up and the fear of someone making fun of you for it. Um, and so it's already embarrassing enough to try something new uh, in a new atmosphere. But when you're trying something new and on top of it, it's in your second, third, fourth language, then you really feel the pressure and you're like, wow, you lose that self-confidence and it's hard to express yourself. So feeling that sense of security, I think um, for me was one of the big reasons why I was able to succeed in uh, learning very fluent Spanish because you take away those insecurities and all of a sudden you feel empowered. You feel like a new person. So I love that aspect. And you personally, you don't speak any other languages, do you? I don't. I speak just enough to tell the mom and the grandma, I love them. Can we go dance and, you know, keep it fun with the families? But I, I always keep it enjoyable. I usually, because I have to go to so many countries, um, Spanish would be probably my secondary language I know the most of. But then it starts radically changing between me traveling to about 100 countries right now, helping and empowering people. Um, languages are, are diversely different. So um, no, it was never my skill set. Mine was working with great teachers like yourself that um, your brain's just sponge it. It's impressive. And be able to teach other people and apply that knowledge. So no, ma'am, I do not. So I think um, based off the fact that you don't speak a second language, I find it very interesting that you have found your passion in helping other people gain a second language. I think that's something very interesting that I've never met someone personally so passionate about helping someone else in something they've never gone through. Uh, normally we attract um, ourselves to things that we've experienced. And so you're putting yourself out there to help people in something that you've never gone through, but you wanna find the way to help them overcome those barriers by connecting other people that have gone through that, creating the best of the best to help everyone be their best, you know, just this, this great like-minded community. So what was your motivation or inspiration in creating this program? Why was it so important for you if you've never gone through the process yourself? Why, what made you feel that passion? Because this is something that we in the English without borders um, and the business groups that we do that empower people in their business and interview skills is when I question people about purpose and vision, my mentor always just asks me, it's not about the subject, it's about what you're doing. So I love teaching. But I realized a long time ago, <clears throat> teaching, what drove me to teaching was changing people's lives and having them take something they did not understand. And then within about a couple minutes, I could get them from, um, from a start to a finish. And you see the light bulb come on, the aha. And that aha is something that they can never forget because that is something that is a directional change in their life. So when I'm questioning people about business and they tell me, well, my passion is and they'll say music or art, or there's a lot of topics. And I go, well, what would you want to do? And they go, I want to do this full time, but I don't know how. I'm able to take that same idea and flip it into something that they can turn into a business. They can turn into something that they're passionate about. And the world doesn't challenge people enough to do this. So language is one of those things that I know the world needs. Nobody has willing to do it properly, in my eyes, the way it should be done and give people education and charge something that is free charge something that's free that's a crazy concept and say how can you do it people are scared and I don't see why 
So I said, even if it wasn't, I love teaching, I can bridge with great teachers that are passionate and we can change the entire world very quickly by doing this. Why not? You know, that was, that, that's something that I can sleep on at night and knowing that we've done a huge blessing in the world. That feels amazing. That's great. I definitely feel inspired myself with the concept of English Without Borders. <laughs> There's something cool too, by the way. And there is a reverse. You said, even though I don't, it gives me the option. Remember, what's my passion? I love traveling. I love helping the world. I now make family. All the hundreds of thousands of people become part of my family. Where when I travel and start seeing the world again, after all this, you know, the borders open again, um, yeah, I'll be actually meeting people and going to have dinner with them because I know they're my extended family through English Without Borders. So it is tricky. It does get to play back to my angle too, where we can all serve each other and it's a win-win. Exactly. I think this is an amazing tool. Um, language is a tool at the end of the day. It's a tool, a means of communication. And we think of it as something so much greater than that. But at the end of the day, it's something so simple. You know, we just have to find the correct way, uh, the motivation and have the support behind us to get that um, that fluency level or get to where we want to go. So I think it's amazing that you're trying and that you are uh, providing this tool for people in just a free manner, you know, just to, to help millions out there. So I think that's amazing. Uh, before we wrap it up, is there anything else, any final thoughts you'd like to add about what you're doing and why you're doing it? Um, I would say we have a, we're paving a new highway, something that doesn't exist yet. Um, biggest thing with people watching this video, I would challenge in return is people around you, family, friends, um, even your teachers, have them be a part of this course. Like let them be a part of something bigger than all of us because I need help doing this. This is not about what you're doing, Kayla, what I'm doing and the rest of the team. Really our community is what powers and fuels this project of something that even though it's free, I need help getting this message to other people because we all know somebody in our life that needs some type of that helping hand to go to something next. So, um, but yeah, invite them to be a part of the project and challenge them to ask questions and think about it. The more people around you that are part of our program is our program. Everybody, our teachers, our members, our students. I said, those are people that you can then start practicing with on a day-to-day -day basis. So it actually empowers you also. And that's what I think is going to be really rewarding in it. But that's also what I also need help growing the program so we can be known worldwide. That's awesome. Great. So uh, for anyone listening, <laughs> you heard the message, go out there and share this with everyone. Uh, and let's see how many people we can help together. Let's see how, uh, how we can change the world, how big of a scale we can get this to be. So it was a pleasure uh, speaking with you, Edward, hearing about the English Without Borders initiative. Uh, let's get out there and change some lives. All right. See you guys. Join EnglishWithoutBorders.org or meet us on Facebook. We have a group and we have a page. Join all of them, guys. That way you can get a lot of the content, videos we're coming out with, and I'll see you there. See you guys. Yeah, see you there.